Hey, welcome back. Uh, it was Black Friday this week, and I bought a bunch of knives that I probably didn't need, but further rounded out the collection. So let's get into it. Here's one of them. I'm actually really excited about this one. Let's see how this Spider Co. blade shape does. The thing is freaking razor sharp, I'll tell you that. Wow. I guess it makes it work is kind of the answer. That is impressive. I don't think I've ever opened a package with my Spider Co. <laughs> I carried it a little bit. Uh, anyways. Let's, uh, let me just get this off screen so I don't potentially share any sensitive info. And uh, here we go. So why did I use a spider code to open up the box today for a change? Whoa! Was it a predictable plot twist? I don't know. Maybe. You tell me. I have a few spider codes. Not a lot. I have not quite gotten myself like over the hump, but... I saw this guy go on sale, and if you recall, or if you've seen on some of my other videos, I recently added this uh, 20 CV version in the uh, tan from DLT Trading, and uh, DLT Trading did it again. They came out with this uh, OD Green para two, Paramilitary 2, and I had to do it. I had to add it to the collection. I've never had a Paramilitary 2. See what it's all about. Let's see what the hype is about. <clears throat> so, quick size comparison. It's definitely a much bigger knife. Like how they did the uh, blacked out pocket clip here. Seems like a theme for them when they're doing their exclusives at DLT Trading. Oh, I always got to see if they put a sticker in here. Which sticker did DLT do this time? All right. They put out some funny stickers. This one's a little more run-of-the-mill for them, but it's got that orange and black. So let's have a look at what the Paramilitary 2 is all about. Now, what was cool about this one is also that it's 90V, and I didn't have a knife with 90V. It's not like a go-to blade steel for me, so I've not pursued it. But it is a pretty cool blade steel. First thing I'm noticing is that the blade is such a different shape, actually. I mean, it's generally the same shape, but it's almost like they took the same one and just sort of stretched it out, which is interesting because you'd think the proportions and stuff would end up changing a bit there. Forward choil kind of lets you choke up on it and make it feel like a smaller knife than it is, but then you get this really nice big grip, which you don't really get on these so much. I got to say, though, like... That thing actually does just fit in my hand so well. It's part of why I kind of bought this pair of two and stopped. I was like, okay, I get the concept. And look, I know there's going to be some of those spider co lovers that are listening to this going, no, dude, you don't get it. There's the spider chief and this and that and all that is one and another. I get that, but I was good with this and it seemed to do things that spider co does best from what I could see. I haven't seen something that really caught my eye and said, this is a whole different game. I've seen stuff that I think is inferior to this from Spider Co. And there are some knives that are cool, don't get me wrong. Maybe I'd go with something that's based off like the Axis Lock or something and check that out. But anyways, saw this one and thought it'd be worth a look because it was on a nice little Black Friday sale. So yeah, initial impressions, this actually has the big, it has a big grip, but it doesn't fit in my hand as well, which is weird. I was expecting the opposite. I was expecting this to be like, like I had a uh, Shaman for a while and that had a really nice grip on it. It didn't like blow my mind or anything, but had a really nice grip on it. Um, and I expected this for some reason to feel more like that, but it doesn't. Um, let's see how the performance is out of box. Oh, let's, I don't know if I've switched these or if this just came this way, but this is, didn't come tip up carry. I feel like these came tip up carry, maybe because they're more designed to be carry knives and this is designed to be more of a military, you know, like they say, if you have the pocket clip up here, that's kind of like the, from a 
toll and use perspective, that's the best way, I guess. Um, Cause let me think about why that would be. So if you're normally pointed out this way, then you gotta rotate the knife and deploy. If you pull it out this way, then you're right able to deploy, I guess, is sort of the theory there. So you, let me see, let me actually do it. I'm gonna pull it out of my pocket. Yeah, I get it. It's right into position. So tip down carry, uh, out of box at least, but I suppose par for the course given the theme of what the knife is. The action, is a, it's got a nice tight lockup, which actually my other one here has a little bit of play. Let me see if this one does. That one has nice tight lockup too. So this one's pretty much drop shot at this point. This one's like two drop shot kind of bounces on a hit, so I got to probably tighten that one up. And this one has no blade play. Well, just a touch maybe. Notice that with Benchmates too, it's like almost impossible to get them like just in the right spot where they're no lockup. But this one's like coming out a little slow. It's almost, it's not what I'd call drop shut because if I just go like that, I, I'm fully deploying and it is not dropping, but you can, wiggle it down shut it's wiggle shut is that a term it's wiggle shut um as per usual it appears to have the full flat grind from the top all the way down and then they put like a little what's the term micro bevel at the edge um so if you look at these up close they have like the little micro bevel at the edge but the the Blade shape has, I think you'd call it a full flat grind because it goes from up here all the way down from the very tip, which is cool. I actually really like, there's something very pure and pure about that and they are very, very slicey. Like there's not another knife in DLT always sends this great packing paper that I get to use to test their own knives. There is not a knife that I've bought out of box as slicey as the Spider Co's. And, Made in USA, maybe that's part of it, is that, you know, the care of QA is just a little higher, but like consistently, they're just insanely slicey. And these are just push cuts, pulling paper off, it's crazy. So that's as per usual an expectation with this knife um yeah spirecos are great knives and i feel like on this black friday they've been an, on sale in so many different places knife center blade hq i saw them on like gp knives smoky mountain knife co like whatever that's called i think the smoky, smoky mountain knife something um so many places had spidercos on crazy sales i saw s30v Para 2 for 123. I got this one for I think 139 with S90V. The S45VN I saw for 137, which is one of the things I again like about this. It's my biggest, where's my uh, bug out? It's like my biggest criticism about the bug out is that it's still, I mean, there's a lot, but my biggest one is that it's uh, wherever it is here. Let me find it. It's still S30V. I have the. Uh, the uh, Blade HQ version here too, but that's uh, 20 CV, so kind of addresses the problem. That was like brand new, so it's not quite broken in yet. Where's my bugger? Here he is. Gonna... I just rearranged my knife box and I have all the labels pointed in the wrong direction, I just realized, so. I think I just need to keep this guy out. But I, I oftentimes, when I think of Spider, I don't know, is this a, is it just me? When I think of Spider Co, I think of Benchmade. Maybe it's because they're both US made brands, like one's Pac Northwest, one's Mountain State. But when I think of Spider Co, I think of Benchmade, and I just constantly in my mind am comparing these two very divergent companies that have taken completely different approach. Now they've started to cross pollinate a lot of what each other do. Spider Co started to steal some of the locks from Benchmade. Benchmade started to steal the, you know, the, uh, well, I don't even know what they call that, the circle fuller or whatever. 
from Spider Co. I don't know what that's called. I should go look that up. Um, <clears throat> the the fact that they're putting the S45VN on this uh, Para 2 to me is, and they have it on the Para 3 now too, they've upgraded from S30V, is a real demonstration of the fact that this company like tries to continue to stay with like the benchmarks. Whereas Benchmade tries to set their own benchmarks, I kind of feel like, and keeping this S30V blade steel and raising it to $162 makes it the worst buy right now for like EDC. It's such a great knife still. It's still like one of my top EDCs, but value wise, terrible, terrible. Now I do really like the handle on it, um, but I say the trade-offs, you know, this one's more ergonomic uh, with more kind of like places to, yeah, this one is like, you can't just grab it and be good as fast quite, you know, because there's more, you got like more, inflection and the shapes and stuff this one you just grab it and you're kind of good wherever you grab it if you grab it here by mistake here by mistake choked up too far by mistake it's just a simple tried and true shape and it just works really well no matter where you grab it but i feel like you can get into better positions with this knife for the you know i think of the uh the demco in particular is like probably one of my favorite ergos for like just utility cuts and stuff and this one's, this one's still my favorite of the bunch, but, um, yeah, this pair of two is pretty badass. Uh, nice G10 scales on it. I see it runs a full, uh, full steel liner. So everyone, you know, this is a knife that's been around for a long time, but everyone probably knows that, but the Benchmade doesn't. So, you know, that's a trade off on weight, but you make it up on strength. This, the strength of this thing is, Phenomenal. You got G10 and a full liner. Like, they're just taking a very, when I say divergent, like these two companies, there's a few things that overlap, but like I'd say five out of the 10 elements that maybe a knife company considers when they build a knife, I feel like these two companies kind of go the opposite directions on. And I'll just talk about what some of those are for me. Um, so I think of like what ergonomics and, you know, Spider Code goes with like a, they try and go after the hand shape, kind of built in ergonomics. Um, whereas Benchmade seems to generally go with a more flat, straight um, handle. Uh, blade obviously speaks for itself just looking at it, but, um, and there are a bunch of, you know, different blades and stuff, but they're gonna do more of a traditional drop point at Benchmade. They have others, don't get me wrong. And these guys are going to do whatever the hell that thing is. I don't even know what it's called, but uh, call it a clip point fuller. I don't know. I don't know what you call this thing. Spiderco blade. Maybe they, I should go look at their website. I know they put some good info on their website. I looked at it once. Um, um, you know, G10 full metal liner. So although they're going for lightweight, like this is definitely, these are lightweight knives. They don't sacrifice like that blade rigidity or the handle rigidity rather, like the handles are super strong. So that's different. Obviously the grinds are vastly different. I don't, I think this is a flat grind. I don't think this is a hollow. Yeah, it's a flat grind. So they're both flat grinds, but very different. Like this one starts partly through, it's got a swedge. If I have a criticism of this, there's a few things. It's a little pokey, and then it's also pretty flat up here. It's it's maybe like a touch knockdown. Like, it doesn't feel terrible. Yeah, it does feel pretty bad. Um, that's pretty flat across the top. Same thing on the pair of two. And then they're pretty sharp inside the fuller, which I don't like. They do have the, on the lightweight, it's kind of knocked down in there, which is nice. But, like, I feel like most of the time when I put my finger into that fuller to deploy, I'm likely to lose a little bit of finger. It's just uncomfortable, right? It's not even that I'm concerned about injury. It's just like I feel a little scraping, like fingernails on a chalkboard in there. Just, just not, that's not what you want to feel. You don't want to be distracted by, like, your nail getting ground down, shaved off by that thing. That's just not ideal. So, um... You know, you think about the Mini Adamas, like the, there's so many models, obviously, I don't want to go start naming out a bunch of different models, but um, the Osborne, there's so many um, things that Benchmade has done 
but they're pretty consistently like in their direction. And these guys are pretty consistently in theirs. And Benchmade, obviously in the bug out, was all about lightweight. Uh, again, I don't really mind it for opening packages and stuff, but certainly wouldn't want to, uh, you know, go do hard use stuff with this knife. So yeah, I don't think there's too much more to say about this. I'm gonna have to think about what to do with it. If this ends up being something that I use in some way or just stays in the collection, if it's a safe queen. Um, it's obviously not like a highly collectible, but it is an exclusive. I don't know if they'll continue doing this OD green, but it's a classic DLT exclusive, right? Where they do like the black, the OD green, blacked out hardware, and then a unique blade steel with the S90V I think is kind of cool. So I don't know, maybe I'll uh, put some thought into it. Now here's my thought on S90V from the research I've done. Everyone has different opinions on blade steels, but um, really cool for like light use um, edge retention. Not so good for like harder use, like not strong on the toughness side. And like decent on corrosion resistance, but not, not as good as what you can get. You can get higher corrosion resistance, higher toughness knives. I'd even go for the S45VN above it. I'd go for 20CV above it. I'd put it trade-offs on S30V. I think they both have their trade-offs. This is probably a little more well-balanced, but that's certainly like a more premium steel would be my kind of description. <clears throat> and all inferior to the great Magna Cut. Well, we won't go into blade steels much more than that today. Um, cool knife, feel and hand a little underwhelming, but it's a cool knife. And now I can use it for size comparisons, which is part of why I got it. So now I have basically these two as little DLT exclusives for size comparisons, just for fun. That was kind of where I was going with it. So my buying reason for this knife is not the same probably as yours. If I'm buying a user, there are a few like Black Friday sale Para 3s for EDC that I would say would be the best all around users. These are just kind of for fun size comparisons and so on. <laughs> Excuse me. And, uh, you know, DLT, I like their exclusives. Uh, I'll lean towards a DLT exclusive over most. There are some others out there that like Monkey Edge and a few others that I think do some next level kind of exclusive of frag and whatever else, but DLT for like just sort of doing their little 10% or 20% variation. I think they do a pretty fun job on the stuff that they bring in. So um, I think that's all for now. We, uh, you know, got to see another really cool knife. I'm really nitpicking this still, like even though I go after that, how I did a little bit, like I'd still put this as like a, you know, one of the better all around knives that I've handled. Like there's so many good things about this knife. Um, and if you're using it for more of a tactical thing, that's of course where it kind of starts to step up from this one, um, where you start to be able to use this knife in some ways that you might not with a smaller knife. So um, that's not my use case at all, but obviously a longer edge there and a much longer handle with more diverse grip patterns that you could put on it. Um, for me, more of the EDC kind of guy. This is uh, more for this channel than anything else. So we'll leave it at that. All right, thanks for stopping by. Um, please like, subscribe, comment if I missed something or didn't know something, which I very much likely did given it's Spyderco and it's not my strength. Um, yeah, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care.